All right, welcome back everyone. We've got a new feature that we're bringing out on the Typhoons. It's been out for a little bit, but uh, we felt it was it really needed its own explanation. So it is a variation of the TIG, DC TIG pulse. It's not available on the AC side. It's only on the, the DC side of the units, but it's DC TIG double pulse. So this is a, a pretty hard concept to explain, but basically, we have two different types of pulses. We have a low speed pulse and we have a high speed pulse. So typically a low speed pulse is anything under 20 Hertz. Uh, so 20 pulses per second, that's typically considered a low speed pulse. Anything over that is considered a high speed. And what these do for you, low speed pulse, of course, it pulls uh, heat input out of the material. So as you're making a weld, slow speed pulse really helps with heat control. High speed pulse, on the other hand, helps with puddle agitation, but does not help with your actual, your heat input control. So because we're pulsing so fast, it really doesn't offer that high low. It, it's pulsing so quickly that it helps stabilize the puddle, but it also helps the, the puddle agitation. So when we take both of those separately, they have their own uses, but when we overlap them together, we get the benefits of a low speed pulse with the heat input reduction, but we also get the puddle agitation and the more stable arc of the high speed pulse. So we're gonna show you how to set that up on the Typhoon 230 today and kind of show you guys how you can use it to your benefit. So let's go over to the machine. We've got it set up on standard DC TIG, no pulse right now. I'm gonna show you guys how to access the double pulse menu and then we'll go through and explain it a little bit. So we're gonna come over to the machine. Of course, we're on our top menu. We wanna drop down. We'll scroll over to our pulse, click on it. Now, this is our standard pulse. So we're going standard square, standard triangle sign, trapezoid. Then we have double and the menu all of a sudden gets a lot more complicated. So now let's go back up and we're gonna roll through this two tier top menu just with the, the scroll knob. So we'll scroll around and now we have pulse amp, we have pulse time one Pulse amps one, <laughs> pulse frequency high, pulse time two, pulse amps three, or sorry, pulse amps two, then pulse amps three, pulse frequency low, and our pulse time low. So even uh, just me reading through it, obviously, I confused myself. But what we're basically doing is we have our 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 main amp program. So that's gonna be your, your main pedal control. So I've got that set right now at 201 amps. So then we have our lower pulse percentage, just like normal, but within that, we have a secondary pulse profile where our maximum amps on that, that high speed pulse are going to be below, and we wanna make sure that we set them below our base pulse amperage. So I know that gets really wordy. Um, it's a little bit easier when you're looking at the menu. So we've got our, we've got our standard main amperage. Um, on 065, of course, 200 amps is gonna be way too much, but we're just gonna leave everything where it's at for the sake of, uh, the sake of use. So our pulse time one, that's gonna be our actual main pulse. What do we consider our slow speed pulse? That's our pulse time on. So. 60% time on. Our main pulse amperage, I've got set to 50% right now. Our high frequency pulse is gonna be 300 Hertz. And we have a 50% time on for that high frequency pulse. The, the high frequency pulse, high amperage is at 20 amps with a 50% background amperage for the high frequency pulse. So if we're, if we're wide open, we're gonna get 20 amps on the, high, on the high speed pulse side maximum with obviously 50%, so 10 amps on the low side. Then we have our pulse frequency low. So that's our standard pulse. I've got it set to 1.2 Hertz right now. And then we have our pulse low amperage, which is gonna be our background, our initial background amperage. So that's a lot of settings. Obviously, we've got a lot of variables. So we're dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine variables 
to this pulse that we're trying to, to manage. And the thing with the dual pulse is if you, if you change one of those settings, it does have an effect on the other one. So this is kind of like dual pulse MIG in a way, where if you make a change to one of those settings, it does have an effect on the rest of them. So if you get way off in the weeds, you know, to an extreme, like a big jump one way or another on a setting, it can, it can totally mess up your pulse profile. So I've got this pulse profile saved because I know it works really well. I've dialed it in. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll show you what it, what it looks like. It's going to have a really weird sound. So you're going to hear a, a really high frequency pulse. And then you're going to, you're not going to see that pulse, but you're going to see our, our main, our main pulse, our low speed pulse. You'll see the arc come in and out with that, that low speed pulse. So let's go ahead. I'm just, I'm not going to run a joint or anything just so we can try to get the best shot of this. So we're just going to run some, some stringers on a flat plate and let you guys see how this, this double pulse works. All right, so now we're set up, we're ready to weld, running a 332nd, 2% uh, lanthanated tungsten, running an Edge 15 gas lens at 30 CFH, so pretty standard setup. So let's go ahead and strike an arc with this thing and show you guys the new double pulse feature. I'm not even gonna use filler rod on this run. You can hear that high frequency, that super high frequency pulse in the background, and you can still see our regular low low speed pulse. Now go ahead, go ahead and taper off. So, like I said, there's a couple things this does for you. We'll mess with some settings and kind of show you how you can get them way out, but. What this really helps with, especially if you have a gap, sometimes running the low speed pulse, um, especially if you're pulsing really hard, that arc will tend to want to jump side to side. With this, the addition of the high speed pulse overlapped in this double pulse, it'll really help to keep that arc centered right in the center of your joint and it won't try to jump side to side. It'll really stay locked in. The other thing it helps with too, like I said, is the puddle agitation. So what this helps, um, it helps the impurities like out of a root pass come to the surface so you get a lot cleaner root pass um, and it provides a lot more puddle control. So let's go ahead, let's change around a couple of the settings on the double pulse. We can kind of see what each, uh, I'm not going to run through each feature, obviously nine of them doing nine different setups is going to take a long time. I don't think anybody wants to watch that much uh, menu changes, but we'll change a couple settings and you can really see how that affects our overall pulse. So let's go back to the machine real quick. So again, we're just gonna scroll through. So we've got our pulse frequency high. Let's go ahead and we'll turn it down. We're gonna turn it down to 200 Hertz. And our pulse time two, let's turn it down to 20%. Let's just leave it, that's enough that we're gonna notice a change. So let's just leave it like that. Let's go ahead and make another run. We'll have the arc shot key on and we'll see a little bit of a difference between those those pulse profiles now so you can tell even now just <clears throat> quite a bit different sound to that pulse obviously with the high speed pulse being a 100 hertz lower we get a quite different sound out of that So there's just playing with it a little bit. Let's go back to the machine. And now we're gonna, we'll change around a couple other settings. We'll come over to our pulse three amperage. Let's turn it down to 20%. So now we're gonna take the base amperage for our, our main pulse and bring it way down. So we're gonna have a little more heat control. Obviously this coupon's already curling up a little bit. And we're gonna turn our pulse frequency low let's turn it to 2.2 so we'll get a little a little faster low speed pulse uh, with less amperage on the on the back side and we'll see what that sounds like now and you should be able to see a difference in the arc there we go
probably should have warned everybody about it. Light flashes on that. But that's the, uh, that's the general concept of the, the double pulse. Like I said with, uh, with the, 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 the high speed and the low speed pulse, it really offers the best of both and we kind of combine them in one. So you're overlapping those two, those two pulse profiles. So you get the really stable arc of the high speed pulse and you still get the, the heat reduction from the low speed pulse. So especially if you're welding uh, like titanium, like really thin titanium, this can especially help uh, really keep that arc super stable and then also pull heat out of it. So yeah, it's a, it's a complicated, hard to explain feature. Uh, it's one of those things there's there is not a right answer um so saying oh what you know what would my settings be for this exact process a lot of the the double pulse is going to be left up to user preference so there's not a, a right there's not really a right answer there could be a whole lot of wrong answers especially when you start getting the if you get your high speed amperage above your low speed amperage it's gonna, it basically will confuse the machine that won't pulse. So if you go to use double pulse and it's not pulsing, um, more than likely what you've done is you've set your high speed pulse amperage above your base pulse amperage and it, the machine basically doesn't know what you wanna do at that point. So obviously, like I said, a very complicated setting. Um, it takes some playing around with to really get it dialed in. So I've kind of, I played with it for a while. I've got a setting that I really like, and I've actually started using it instead of uh, using a foot pedal pulse. I've started using the double pulse more for some of the stainless stuff I do, uh, but it does take some playing with it. But hopefully that explains it for you. It makes it a little, uh, little more simple, um, easier to understand, but super, fe super helpful feature. So if you guys have any questions about it, always feel free to hit us up. Uh, I can guide you a little bit. Like I said, a lot of it's personal preference, but I can, can get you in a pretty good ballpark. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, so we'll have more content coming out with that soon. Appreciate everyone stopping by. We'll see you later.